across the front of the church one way and I skip back the other way. Mm. <laughs> I said to Brother Maiden, I think he's forgiven me now. It's been a few years. I said, I'm not going to tell you I'm sorry. I'd rather the Lord not disturb, disturb you. I'd rather disturb you than the Lord not disturb me. You understand what I'm saying? If we don't be obedient to the Lord, you know what happens? Most of the time, he catches you where it's the most peaceful, where you're asleep, and he wakes you up, and never, not a one of you is going to tell me it's wonderful. <laughs> and I'm sure you're not asking God what he wants. <laughs> I just start praying in tongues as hard as I can when I wake up. Because I know when I'm not going back to sleep, and I know when he wants to speak to me. Let the Lord do his freedom through you and watch his handiwork in the earth. Come on, watch his handiwork. We have a brother, I have a brother that was a runaway. And my mother's praying for him because he started as a very small child. And he got into the hands of authority. My mother, I used to hear my mother cry over him all the time. She'd be washing dishes, crying over her son. A mother that loves her son will do that. Yeah. And she said, Lord, we don't know where he is. He's been gone from home from a young boy. Will you find him? Will you take care of him? And the Lord answered her. He said, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> right now, he's knocking on the door. He's been in an accident. He's been in a car accident and he can hardly see where all of his pain, you know, he, he, the car was, he had a pole, I think, or a tree and demolished the car. And he's knocking on a Pentecostal preacher's door for help. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. We have somewhere in the middle of Oklahoma. Uh, uh, the Lord said, I'm taking care of him right now. <laughs> Come on. You just respond to the move of the Lord, to the flow of the Lord, to the rhythms of the Lord. And it, it'll just hit you suddenly. I've been in the stores when the COVID first hit. I'm in Costco. It's a good place to be. I was on the Costco train. And they said they had no toilet paper and they had no paper towels. That's okay. I can see my way to victory in this store. So I was going down the aisles looking at everything, and all of a sudden, an anointing hit me, and I started singing all these patriotic songs, God Bless America, mm -hmm. America the Beautiful. And I remember when mankind did this in front of me, <laughs> he put uh, under his arm. I wasn't singing loud, but it was enough to disturb him. And I kept singing. And I'm going and coming out of the aisle into the main aisle, and I looked, and here comes a basket with a whole big package of TP. Where'd you get that from? He said, the truck just came in. I sung the truck right into Costco, but I know I did. Come on. Your song, your river. You got a river in you. And this river is going to carry the waste out of this nation. And you listen, listen, honey, listen, I want to be careful. I believe we got a victory today. We scored a point somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. We did it. You could feel it in the air. How many I know it? Yeah. Yeah. God put a cloud over the yeah. sunshine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but I felt we scored a point. Yeah. And you keep talking to God about it. When you're in your car, when you go home, it just even if you're quiet, sit in the chair. We're still in the days of Yom Kippur. The Feast of Tabernacles is coming up. Glory to God. Oh, there's going to be, he wants you to celebrate him all the time. That's what's missing in the church. You got to get a little of that Israeli flavor in there. And talk to him. Lord, I believe you. Oh, God, I really believe you. You're the only one. We, we don't want to look at anybody else. We, we don't want to look at any lawyer. We don't want to look at anybody. There's not enough money that can take care of this. 
Lord, we're looking to you because you formed the worlds. You made them. And, oh, God, you put the stars in place and the moon and, 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 and the sun. Oh, come on. Talk to him about what he can do. And, God, we just know that you know how to get in the king's chamber. Hallelujah. You know how to get into the bedroom of everybody that's in charge. You know how to awaken the worst sinner and the chiefest saint. We thank you. Just walk around and clap your hands. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Maybe get a little bit. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. Yes, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. None like you. There's none like you. Nobody can do what. Lord, we thank you. There's none like you. None. You'll be the best opera singer in the world. None like you. Somebody who was in charge of the conference decided we we're just supposed to go in the same car to the airport. <laughs> it gets bad. So they bought a pizza. And I wanted a slice. Not necessarily of theirs. But you know, I needed something to eat and I'm hungry and I could smell it. It's a long flight back from this place to this place. <laughs> Finally, they turned around in the front seat with the whole box. Would you like a piece of pizza? Yeah. This little scenario went on for about two hours. I thought right before the pizza came into the picture. But before you know that God moved them somewhere else in the audience and they're right in my I get it, you know what I'm saying? You can't miss it. Yeah. Well, God was trying to bring a union between this person and myself. And I tell people, you can't fight with God. You might be able to fight with some people, but you, you might even wrestle with an angel, but you can't fight with God. And when God makes a peace of mind, he wants something to happen. Honey, he'll move heaven and earth to make it happen. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, are you back there? Uh, uh. I don't know if we can tell this story or not. Uh, uh. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> something happened recently, and, and uh, you know, and then this person said, even no. got up and hid between people to avoid me. Went out of their way to avoid me. 
And lo and behold, they had to circle the place where I was and he ended up right beside me in the aisle. I just turned to them and I said, what are you trying to avoid me? <laughs> Come on, get it over with. Yeah. We need to be people that we're not acting like children. Yeah. Uh. So, we, I got caught up in a situation where I needed help. We can't tell too much, can we, Rachel? No. <laughs> well, I really needed help, and I can't tell you the whole story. And I hadn't seen this person for a year. And I got lost. And so somebody called me and said, oh, I'll send somebody to come and get you. I'm going somewhere with this. We sing the way we do because we've had victories. Yes. You understand why yes. your praise has got to reach the heavens because you have victories in yes. everything. Hallelujah. Nobody is a stranger to you. Yes. I don't care who they are. Yes. And they're not any better either. Right. Or worse. Okay. And oh, well, I'll send somebody to come and get you. I thought, where have I heard that name before? So I, my friend was in the car with me, and she knew the person. And I said, does this person drive a, I'll say purple. I'll be saying purple car. <laughs> because I'm looking in my rear view mirror while we're lost. Now, the car wasn't purple. It was another color, but I'm a protecting identity. And I saw three purple cars. <laughs> And they were Broncos, all turned, not at the same time. It was like one in a little, another, little while, here comes another one, and, little, comes another, and they were going in the opposite direction. And I thought, oh, that's the color of the car that's coming for me to help me. And it was. And it was the person that had been avoiding me. And I sit in my car and I laughed. I said, oh, glory to God. Who would have ever thought that God would let me get lost so this person that's been avoiding me would find me? Yes, you got to see it like a story that's never been told. Yes. What I'm saying to you is just keep your record clear and keep your life full of God. Yes. I've been quiet the last few days because it's Yom Kippur. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yourself full of God. Keep short accounts with the Lord. You know what short accounts are? Mm -hmm. As soon as something bad happens, you repent. Yes. Get you go out and get you some ashes. Mm -hmm. Put some on your head. Buy you some sackcloth. Friend told me she did this. She called me yesterday before yesterday. She said, "You know what?" I tried that one time. I went out and bought me a sack, a feed sack, and cut a hole in the end of it, the other end of it, two on the side, put it over my head. And then uh, I went out and got me some coals. Oh. Set them on fire, let them burn a while, then I brought them back, put them all over my head oh. in a church. Honey, you don't want to do that. I don't care if the clouds fall in, because it takes a lot to clean yourself up. But that's a sacrifice. If it takes afflicting yourself to rejoice, do cartwheels. Remember that lady up here laying on the floor beating a tambourine? She's laying on her face just beating the floor with her tambourine. That was her signal to God. That was a picture I'll never forget. Nobody does that. She's laying in a, it almost twisted up in a sea, Be just tapping her tambourine to the music. Come on, she's flowing with the unity of the orchestras of heaven because she's playing God's song. God wants us to rejoice in everything and watch and see what he will do. And he's going to do it for you. He's coming through. Rejoice, America. How many enjoyed those moments? How many felt it? How many felt it in your spirit? Yes. Well, I just saw some people one day rejoicing like that. 
because we needed a victory, and they were laying up under. The tripod was a little bigger than that. They were leaving up under the legs of the tripod. I don't understand. I don't know how they got there. Because God said, we had a prophetic word that morning, and God said, I'm coming through this place today, and we'd already had four prophecies and five exhortations and three revelations and four <laughs> songs. And, and I thought we were through, but God wasn't through. This young boy who'd been the heat of the battle all day long, he'd worried every one of us. He stood up and began to prophesy. I didn't think his spirit was clean enough, but I'm sure he was. The word came. The Lord said, I'm going to go down every road, by every seat, by every person, like a whirlwind today. I thought, well, I thought we just did that, Lord. <laughs> People, you should have seen them. They danced till they were soaking wet. All of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I to this day, I think I blinked my eyes. The pulpit got turned around. I don't know how it happened. Wow. And a lady was sitting beside it, by, sitting on the floor behind it, facing away from the pulpit, cross-legged like a Native American Indian doing a powwow. And the pastor is laying up in the artificial flowers. <laughs> laying up in the artificial flowers. Speaking slowly in tongues. <laughs> and you know what the word was? After the brother gave the word, God is so good, the Lord spoke to my associate who played the keyboard. He said, I'm going to put the biggest clown nose on the pastor. <laughs> That's the word of the Lord. How would you like to have that prophecy in your church? They call you a false prophet. God wants us to rejoice through these hard times. Amen. Boy, it just puts God in a place to do something. And that's why we kept singing and singing. How many felt that? I'm not tired. Listen, I've been standing here longer than any of you. I've been standing up here long. Many of you stood together this morning. And I'm not tired. Now I might collapse later. This is not a historical moment. It's a historical moment. Hysterical for the devil. Hysterical for the people that's made it difficult for us. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Glory to God. But you can dance like she can. You got to learn to dance like she does. Yes, yes. Take it all. So, something happened this morning that goes with the prophecy from Deborah. Yeah. And I have to say, I was thinking about how Dutch Sheet several years ago told the story of intercessors in Florida. And they said that healing miracles have been held up or bound up in America because of abortion. Yes. So now we're saying everything is going to be released. Somehow it's connected with abortion. So there's a woman from Rwanda. She's come here. She has an autistic daughter. And my husband and I have been involved with this family. And they call us grandma and grandpa. Well, the autistic one can't talk. So she came to visit us this morning, the mother. She couldn't come to this meeting, but she came to visit us. And we are believing for this autistic 11-year-old to be healed. Wow. And we're also <laughs> believing for a resurrection for a little girl named Ava Leah, whom Sister Ruth prayed for her mother, and then the mother died. I mean, yeah. we have yeah. all seen so many things not healed. I believe it's a sign from the Lord that Amen. beautiful Rwandan mother came to our house this morning. And I cannot even tell you how she believes for her daughter. They've been yeah. separated from the husband who's footing the bills in Rwanda Hallelujah. for three years. These are professional people. She's gone through, through things that should never oh. have been. And unjust things and that I won't tell you through the microphone. but. She sat on my couch and prayed the most beautiful prayer, and her, her 10 year old, almost 10 this month, in a week, and her six year old are believing for the healing of their autistic sister. Yeah. I believe she came to my house this morning and that healing miracles released because of this, I mean, with this word from the Lord. Wow. We, 
Are they connect? That's what I wanted to say. I declare, that's what I wanted to say. I'm declaring healing miracles in the people we've been believing for, and it's connected to this breaking of the power of this murderous spirit. Amen. Yes. I'd like to share something that goes with that. This is this is this is something that I heard this morning. I know, you know, Sister Ruth talks about how when she drives past these churches and she prays for them. Well, she knows where I'm talking about. It's called Jesus Church, and right next to it is this place called Autism Institute. And I spoke this out loud this morning. I said, God wants to heal autistic people in that place. And I believe that that's a word from the Lord, really, that God is going to do something amazing with autistic people all over this land. Yes! We believe for your family. For anybody in the family. Many times, listen, many times it's just one person changing their mind about something. Yeah. They've proven, science has proven that fear and everything that goes with fear causes a lot of sickness in people's bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. But we know that in the name of Jesus we're healed suddenly, yeah. immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Oh. Yes, God wants to heal them, but there's an alignment that comes from many directions to cause the miracle to happen. Do you understand yeah. There's an alignment that comes. I've had great miracles this past week. Hallelujah. I've had somebody do my my lawn. They didn't want any charge for it. It was a lot of work. Somebody else called me and wanted to know what was wrong with my phone. I said, well, it won't live much longer. They tell me it might last another year. <laughs> well, how much will a new one cost you? Yeah. Well, I don't know any bad phones. I've never bought one. Well, I'm sending you a check. How about three or four hundred dollars? Will that help you? <laughs> so I got my a new phone and I got my yard cleaned up. Well, there's about six or seven hundred dollars right there. You see, God's got the biggest bank in the world, but it's not the money. It's not the money. It's the God that's always there to help us. But you get into a place, even if you have to squeeze in there somewhere and do a little bit of bumping to get into your place with God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anybody ever been somewhere and you want to see something? I'm down in Mexico, and it's getting late in the day, and I knew if we were late getting in that line, it would be forever because it was that time of the year and the weather was wonderful. And I remember I saw this cart over here, and that cart was taking people in and out, and I ran over and jumped on it. But I didn't see all these people were sitting down in this little cove. And, and I, I heard these voices. And I said, what are you doing in there? They said, we're waiting to get on that cart. I said, oh, you mean I'm not first? I laughed so hard, I almost fell off the cart. I said, OK, I'll get off. But I didn't give up. I kept on walking to where I saw these cars moving. There were Mexicans that were in there with their private cars. And I went over with my friend and knocked on the window. I said, sir, would you give me a ride through the checkpoint? He said, yes, ma'am, I will. It was up to me whether I was willing to go that ride or not. And you know what I did? My friend and I got in his car, and we got out ahead of everybody. And we got to the checkpoint, and the man there checking us, he's an American. What are these two ladies doing in your car? I said, because I asked him. He went, oh. We got just like that. Oh. I said, I ask you. We got legal passports here. You just got to be willing to take another route. Yeah. You're going to get there. You're going to get out of there. Otherwise, we would have been two, three hours yeah. getting out of there. Mm. But I let that joy overtake me. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Believe. You got something? Yeah. Flex yeah. your muscles. Um. I got two things. One was uh, my husband had a vision. He was praying just the other morning. He was asking the Lord, Lord, how long? You know, all this stuff going on. It's like every day something worse happens than the day before in the government. 
and he said the Lord gave him a vision of a pressure cooker. Okay. And uh, he didn't quite get that, but he told me about it. I said, well, I understand. I use a pressure cooker all the time. I said, the difference between that and a regular pot is on a regular pot, you lift the lid, you look inside, you stir it up. With a pressure cooker, you don't do that. You know, you, you put it on, you let it rise to pressure, you set the time, and then you wait for the pressure to release naturally or you have an explosion. Yeah. Right. And you can manually release the pressure, but if you just take that lid off, you're going to have a real mess to yeah. clean up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I understood it, and then he thought, wow, yeah, that was pretty neat. God was going to let the pressure build, and then he's going to let it cook. And then it was time, he's going to release the pressure. And then uh, the other thing, two weeks ago, Ruth was sharing a dream she had. And part of that dream was she saw President Trump sitting on a chimney. Right. And when she was talking, it's like I was having her dream. I was just uh, sitting there seeing him sitting on that chimney. And I, I knew the Lord was trying to tell me something, but I didn't get it right away. And so it, it just reminded me so much of a dream I had had. It was the very end of 2015 or just the beginning of 2016. It was before we even knew who was going to be running for presidency in uh, 2016. And anyway, in this dream, I got in a white van here in Arizona with a real estate agent. And a bunch of bicyclists started following us. And this real estate agent was going to take me to look at a house. And we got, we drove, when we drove and we drove and we finally got out to the East Coast. And he parked the car and all the bicycles parked their car. And we're looking up this hill at a house on a hill. I knew it was the White House in my dream, other than the fact that it was brick and it wasn't white. <laughs> But you know how you know things when you're dreaming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was kind of dark. It was late when we got there. No lights on. No lights on the whole street. No lights in the whole on the whole hill. Mm. We got to the, you know, where we should be able to walk in, but we, we were rock climbing to get up there. You know, we were on our hands and knees trying to get up to this house. And he, the, the real estate agent opens the door and we walk in. But I was seeing the top of the chimney where President Trump was sitting in her dream. But on the top of this house, there was someone pouring concrete into the chimney. Well, then I'm standing in the living room and I'm watching that concrete flow come out through the fireplace and onto the floor. And it uh, ends up in the shape of a, well, the shape of, like a spearhead or an arrowhead, only it, it was like in a medieval picture of the devil, like his tail. Yes. Wow. And, uh, well, I never did quite understand this whole dream until Ruth had her dream. And then I understood my dream and part of her dream. Because in her dream, she said there was people standing around. They were asking um, President Trump if he was going to be president again. And he looks over at Ruth and he says, well, ask Ruth. <laughs> and it's like it all started to come clear to me that this real estate agent drove me up to the White House and was asking me and these other people, do you want to buy this house back? Wow. It's really your house. As a nation, you own it, but do you want it back? Are you willing to pay the price to get this house back? Wow. Wow. And with President Trump asking Ruth, he's really asking the praying church, yeah. are you going to pray for it? Yeah. Is that the price you're willing to pay to get this house back? I remember yeah. you told that. Yeah, I did. I that. that was, like I said, it was the very beginning of 2016 or the very end of 2015. It was before we knew Trump was even going to run. Yeah. And, but people were trying to pull him off of the chimney in my dream. There were one had him oh. by the leg trying to pull him off, and another was trying to push him to the other side. But he had one leg wrapped around the chimney. You know how you do that sometimes, to anchor yourself, to hold yourself. And they were, there they was a big audience there saying, well, do you think you're going to go back and try again? He said, well, I don't know. 
And he said, well, let's ask Ruth. Well, I was hosting him. There was two parts to the dream. And I thought, I don't even know how to answer this question. But I remember I said something to him. I stammered around for a minute. Then I said, well, it depends on whether you do this and this. But I don't remember what the this and that was. <laughs> and I woke up. But being on the chimney is a good dream. Yeah. That means he's yeah. going to be exposed. He's once again going to have an opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's just something went through my head. What was it? Yeah, buying yeah. the property. Uh, yes. Yeah, buying the property back was, yeah. you know, through our prayers, believing God that once again the praying church in this nation has the White House. And, uh, oh, in 2008, while I was standing in my living room, this is, I was still back in Indiana. I, I turned the radio on and heard the news that Mr. Obama had just won the election in 2008. I was just standing there thinking, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't impressed with anybody running in 2008. <laughs> I didn't have a yay or nay. And, uh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Anyhow, um, listen to this. But I stood there. And the Holy Spirit said, a portal of evil yes. has been opened over this nation mm -hmm. that has never been opened before. Yeah. Amen. Yep. And I never knew what that was. Everything I could think of, it was already here. Maybe not full-blown. Maybe not as big as it has gotten. But I believe when the pressure cooker lid comes off, there's going to be an awful lot exposed. Yes. And we're going to see horrendous things that have been hidden in that pressure cooker. You know, you can't watch what's cooking in a pressure cooker. Like you can turn the oven light on and look inside a regular pot. You can lift the lid, lid and see how things are going. Yeah. But in a pressure cooker, when until it's all over, you just don't really know what you've got inside. And um, we need we need to be, I guess, ready spiritually. I think we're going to be. Shaken, you know, because it's not just because of one person that evil entered in a way that it had never been. It's there's a lot going on that we just don't know about, and and we need to be prepared. It's it's going to be a, a real shaking. It's deep. The levels of it are so deep. Here's what you got to know. When he talked about the pommel worm, the canker worm, the locust, yeah. what's that other worm? Canker worm. Can I say canker worm, pommel worm. Locust. The locust is one more. What's the other one? The church has got to raise the standard. It's not the world. The church has got to raise the standard of who we are, what we believe, and then when we open our mouth and declare, it comes to pass. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. If we do this, we, we cannot have anything in our tongue that's got mischief in it. They will want, you don't want me to make this clear. Remember when they were putting up the wall and Sanballat and his group? We're making up all kinds of story and said a prophet had said this and that to Nehemiah. It was Ezra first. And Nehemiah said, you wish to do me mischief. That is not a good word. We think it's something foolish. It's not. It's yes. something devilish. Amen. And there is a lot that's in the church that's crooked. And if God would come in this morning with a list of things that he wanted changed in our lives, could we do it instantly to cause the power of God to be released? Those children of Israel, the Bible says that that cloud of glory covered everyone from the tallest to the least lamb coming out of there. Everybody was covered with the glory. Because they all agreed. Ananias and Sapphira agreed to tell a story, to tell the untruth. And we can't have any of these hidden things in us. I have truth. Come on, we need to get it out. 
and there's something in there we don't, you know, well, we want to be in charge or control of what we're saying, so we won't tell the part that will make a difference. I can, I've had dreams and visions, and I could tell you easily. And I've had people to talk to me and tell me, I would ask them a question, and they'd only tell me a, a part of it. Well, the other part was what was going to make a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remained friends with them, and I've told them any different, but it's really got under my skin. Because yeah. Jesus didn't say that thieves would have their part in the lake of fire. He said liars would. Yeah. All yeah. liars. Yeah. Homosexuals. Adulterers. We're going to have their part in the, the lake of fire. That's what it says. You can't change it. You can tear it out of the Bible if you want to. It doesn't change the fact God said it. It's written. So if we do things to manipulate, to have our way, or we tell half truths, it may cost you something to tell the truth, but tell the truth. Amen. This is the way it is, or just don't get involved. But let there be an alignment. See, that's that plumb line. It's not that Israel is the plumb line. It's not that Israel is better than any other nation. Are you listening? It's not that. That's when it says Israel is the plumb line. It depends on what we see and what we do and how God is using Israel in all the world. When you know what God is doing in Israel, then you know what he's doing everywhere else. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. And you know what God is doing with Israel. She is... He's used her because of a covenant that he made with Abraham. It's just a little covenant. Why can't the rest of the nation see that? That's the truth. It's just because he said what he was going to do. He could have been another nation. But he said, I'm going to, I want to give you a place of your own. Not for other people to come in and bother you. It's for you. Because Abraham was a friend of God. Don't you love it? So... I feel this this person Deborah that she's hearing me I think right now. She's one of the most honest. She's bold but she's honest. She will not let a half truth come into her life by any measure. She won't even let people give her a half truth. If she thinks there's anything in her life I'll just tell you this. Some jewelry came to her that was quite expensive after Sister Ruth died. But it was given to Sister Ruth to wear. And, it, and you know, things keep going and you forget about it. So she kept it and wore it for a long time. It was a Jerusalem diamond cross. I did not know that that cross belonged to somebody else that had loaned it to Ruth to wear. Okay? You got that part? This girl finds me. She gets on the internet after 20 years and said, are you Ruth Carney? Do you remember Ruth Upman? Do you remember her wearing a diamond cross? I said, oh, yes, that was the only piece of jewelry she ever wore. Wow. She said, well, actually, it's mine, and I had proof of the pudding, and she got told me everything about it, how she'd even put a piece on the back to make it a necklace in Jerusalem. Ruth had her to do it. But Ruth got sick and forgot to return it to the girl. We're talking about 30 years here. I said, I know where the necklace is. I thought I did. And so I, believe it or not, Mary Ann Hopkins that comes to the spirit meeting went to Jerusalem and met the person I thought had the cross. So I sent a message for her to see if she had. It's cost a lot of money. She didn't have it. So I'm telling Debbie that you heard this morning. I said, you know, people, we're talking about people putting you on wild goose chases. I said, yes, I've got this lady out in Texas. That's me looking for this Jerusalem cross and I, I don't know where it is, and it's hers, and I explained a little bit to her, and she interrupts me. She said, Ruth, 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 I got the cross. <laughs> and she sent it immediately to the person. She didn't keep it. You understand? She could have kept it. There was, there was nothing there that was the girl's word. I knew the girl. And I sent the cross to her. Yeah, she's so happy. You know what the girl told me? She said, for 22 years I have prayed every day for God to return wow. this cross to me. Wow. 22 wow. years. Yeah. Wow. So he comes down in Arizona to call Virginia, to call back to Texas, and 
over to Jerusalem, but the cross is in the right hands. Amen. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about line up to what is excellent with the Lord. Don't have any hidden agendas. Am I talking to anybody? Don't have any dark secrets or cover yourself or I cover myself with a lie to keep from doing something I don't want to do. Well, I don't think I can do that. So and so is coming by. La la la. You know, we prefabricate the Bible says you make somebody believe a lie. And to him that maketh a person make and believe a lie, the Bible tells us what the curse is going to be on our lives if we cause somebody to believe a lie. Because you might tell me something, and I might tell somebody else, and they tell somebody else, and now five people believe that lie. Okay, I'm talking about let the crooked be made straight to the best of your knowledge. If you listen to Jimmy Swagger talk, he stops himself many times to correct himself to make sure he said the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's a searchlight all the days of our life for truth to come out of us. In other words, if we said David's in this battle and 275,000 people were killed and the Bible says 276,000. <laughs> now, I didn't, I didn't remember that. But I'm reading it. You know, and God wants our conversation to be clean. Just say yes to everything. The green light's going to come. The door is going to open. Do things that you don't really feel like doing and you don't want to do because you don't know where the hand of the Lord is coming in to bring victory. To bring total victory. Amen? Amen. Amen. As I'm standing up here listening to Sister Ruth, it's like she's speaking out the things I saw in a vision. And um, yesterday, my husband and I went to Jewish Voice to pray, and we stayed a little later to um, continue to pray. And I just heard, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. So I started looking it up, um, where it's found in the Bible. And it, it's found where there were such a company of, of uh, the enemy encamped against Israel that it was impossible in them and through their hand and their power. And the zeal of the Lord accomplished it. And, I, and this just keeps echoing in my soul. The zeal of the Lord shall accomplish this. And I saw as we worship today, um, I saw the, the plumb line that the that the Lord has lowered over the earth, but I saw it on America. And it was like, it couldn't be moved. It was over America. It was, it was calling people to get in line with God's ways, God's holiness, God's righteousness. And then I saw like whirlwinds of fire all around it. And I felt like the Lord was saying that, uh, you know, just like this sister Deborah, she said, worship is the highest form of prayer. Yes. And as we worship the Lord, he will bring victory that seems impossible, that we know is not possible in our own strength, in our own power. And this is true for this nation also. When this nation was founded, because it was founded on, to begin with, on the word of God. God fought with the revolutionary soldiers. And there, were, there have always been people from every tribe and every tongue and every nation who will respond to the word of the Lord, who will line up with the word of the Lord. And I, I was sitting here rejoicing that there are, are black brothers and sisters here today. And, and then I thought, oh, there should be he someone here from every tribe, tongue, and nation. And Charlene came in. <laughs> and Wendy came in, the Asians, the First Nations, our black brothers and sisters. And, and, also went, and, I, and I also thought, and there should be someone who is 
pure blooded Jewish here. And Rachel came in. And, and I saw this plumb line, and I saw how it was like uh, the vine of God, the, 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 the vine that is just the tree of life. And that some of us are grafted in, others were part of it, and came into full consciousness of, of what that is. And then I saw streams of the blood of Jesus going out all over the country. And I feel like this is a word, maybe for some that are actually here today, but maybe for some who are listening, where you have felt like, I'm disqualified. But the Lord says, I did not turn away from the man in the temple who couldn't raise his head to me, who cried out and beat his chest. He went away justified in my sight. And I felt the, the presence of the great cloud of witnesses last night, Steve and I watched some of these programs that Sister Ruth was talking about, and we also caught just part of a movie about Martin Luther King. And I was a teenager, a pregnant teenager, when he was shot, and he was a hero of mine. But it talks about the, other, the others that died for that battle, for the righteous thing to be done in our country. And there have been all along white and black slave owners. That's the truth, unfortunately. And there have been white and black and all tribes, tongues and races that have stood for God's righteousness, God's righteousness. And, and I, I felt like that seeing that plumb line and seeing the whirlwinds of fire, the, the, the Lord's word says, a fire goes before him and burns up all his enemies. He calls us his friends. He calls us to be sure, to be sure. Make your calling and your election sure. Make sure that he's in first place in your life, that nothing else because nothing else can take his place. But I, I, I just feel the, the encouragement and, and, and also the admonition of those words. Search it out in the Old Testament. When the Lord performed these incredible victories, the word says, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. The zeal of the Lord will accomplish for America but what America hasn't been able to accomplish for itself. And Father God, I thank you for Sister Ruth, who exhorts us to have that holy hatred of all things that are evil, abortion, any kind of prejudice, And, and Lord, you've named them all, Lord. I just pray, Father God, for, for us and for America, that your blood would cleanse us, that your blood would bring us back to that place of being fully covered and fully hidden in you from the coming wrath. Lord, you said there will be a wrath for the wicked, and we pray so many would come into your kingdom at this time that your light would shine brighter and brighter across our nation. We end over all of Israel, and that all the nations that are meant to be aligned with Israel and your people would begin to become clear. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We need to take heed to ourselves and hide ourselves in a secret place. Amen. Take heed to our ways, our actions, our promises. Every 
idle word. It's not necessary. It's not important. It will not make a difference. It's going to be given account of every. It can be this simple. Would you tell you how simple it is? Well, how are you today? Well, I had this and I had that. And that person called and we went over there. Well, I didn't ask for that. The person said, how are you today? Unless we're making a point or an illustration that will help somebody. And we were taught, we have three doors. Is it good? Is it necessary? And will it make a difference coming out of our mouths? Whoa. That says a lot, doesn't it? Is it good? Is it necessary? And will it make a difference? In other words, is it wisdom and knowledge? There's at least three gifts you need to operate prophecy. You need faith, and you need wisdom, and you need knowledge. Just those three. But usually it takes five gifts to operate the prophetic gift. You need discernment. That's another one. That's four right there. I'm trying to think what the other one is. Five gifts to operate. And Lori could have come up here and prophesied everything that she said. It would have taken the weight higher. Mm -hmm. Would have taken it to another scale. And it would have searched every one of our hearts. That's what prophecy does. It searches the heart. It searches deep down. Because it's like a spotlight going through the air. Searching in all the hidden places. That's why the Bible says all may prophesy. Because we operate these gifts in a meeting and it takes you to the next level. The next level. And if you will get Israel as the missing link in your life, get it in there. I know when they went to Israel, they didn't really realize how important it was, but they found out while they were there how yeah. great that move was. And even if it was a sacrifice and consequences, you don't know how they went, the luggage they had to carry, because they met us in England. But they were willing to pay that price to find out their part in discovering Israel, their part in protecting Israel. And one day when we stand before the Lord, we're going to realize how important it is to have the vision of Israel in our spirit. It works. It makes everything else clear in the Bible. It's all about Israel. It's all about God's promise to Abraham. That's what it's all about. Started there. Think about it. It's going to end there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you brought me all the way to America to take me back to Israel. <laughs> well, I formed you over there. But I multiplied you over here. Glory to God. So get it in your spirit. She saw that plumb line. Because, you know, America is about the only friend that Israel has right now. That really, we got to pray that Biden doesn't get foolish and change yeah. his mind. Amen? I mean, Amen. you know what I'm talking Amen. about. you got to pray this doesn't happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. I saw that the other day that God has his hand on this, on this nation, but if God withdraws his hand because we withdraw ourselves from Israel, oh my, mm -hmm. what's been happening is going to be a small piece of cake to what's yeah. going to possibly happen. Yeah, yeah. You have a vision? Yeah. I began to see the plumb line as it was mentioned again and again. And what I saw was as the plumb line came down, the power of God came through the, the plumb line and it was like a whirlwind. And it began, the plumb line began to, to spin. And as it spun, it spun off uh, lightnings. And uh, the lightnings, the lightnings penetrated and changed the atmosphere. And they changed what was going to happen. Uh, Without the without the power of God, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. say that again. The plumb line, as it came down, I saw a whirlwind.
coming down the line. And the, and the line, the, the whirlwind spun the bottom of the plumb line. And there were lightnings that began coming out of the plumb line, changing the atmosphere, charging it with the energy, charging it with the power of God, and changing the atmosphere so much that things began to line up. He began to what? Line up. Things began to line, line up. up. Yeah, when we when we call president, when we wanted President Trump, we never thought about this. We wanted change. But I think God wanted mercy. Lord have mercy on us. Yes. Amen. Lord have mercy. We, we were already in so deep. And Trump didn't have enough time. And I don't really think that his patterns or his remarks or his comments were wicked. He wasn't a man that liked to hurt people. You, I just, you just knew that, by the way. There's a sound in his voice. You can hear a sound in a person's voice to where they are. Did you know that? You can hear that. That's why they can use your voice as your identification now. Not only your thumbprint, or now your eye, it's your voice. Yeah. Remember they asked John who he was? He said, I'm just the voice. They couldn't identify with him. Listen, Jerusalem wasn't like from here up at the next light from where John was. We were talking about like 15 or 20, 25, 35 miles. They heard about him in Jerusalem. Here's a man with another doctrine that they weren't acquainted with, and it upset the religious spirit. And this is what's going to happen when God begins to move. All those things that are preconceived and are religious are going to go. The real word of God is going to burn like a lamp. It's going to burn. It's going to, listen, it's going to burn the name of Jesus in us. We're going to identify with who he really is. Uh, listen carefully to me, please. There's some of you that do not understand. When the Lord told me, he said, there's people in your prayer meeting that know the journey, but they don't know the process. I want you to remember this. I know how to cook. I used to cook for 1,500 people at a time. We had big speakers come to our camp, so you have to you have pans that you don't have much to put in there to make it, but you you got to do it quickly because there were three meals a day we were serving. We just can't give God any old thing. we got to give our God, and, and God, I pray that you burn it in their heart like the Ten Commandments, that they understand what it means, a living sacrifice. Jesus. Jesus. Burn the truth of a sacrifice into the heart of people to know what it means to lay their lives down. But like Paul, he said, I'm ready to die. How they tried to convince him not to go to Jerusalem, he said, I'm not only willing to be arrested, I'm ready to die. That's a hard thought. God, burn the prophetic in us. Burn it in our hearts, in our lives. In Jesus' name, to be ready to pour out everything, not just a little, and not enough to get by on, but let go of everything, Lord, that holds us to the earthly patterns. We used to call it carnal. We now call it earthly. That sounds better. Earthly. It's just dead works. It's dead. Oh God, let us be a firebrand for you and let our face shine when we speak it out. Let us be people that look like we've been looking at God. Let us have that look, that identity on us. That people will ask, who are you? Where do you come from? Come on, we need that from every person that doesn't know God. They're hungry to, to identify with who we are and where we're going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And people will get saved in a moment. They won't be weeks thinking about it. They'll get saved in a moment. In an instant, they'll turn everything they have over to God and say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you.